horns, it's the same thing. The four horns are the political, uh, which we've already done the political. I ain't going to give a whole lot of examples today about that, but you don't have to look very far to see the legislation that they, that they put forth and the things that they put into law, uh, uh, such as same-sex marriages. You know that's an abomination inside of God. Uh, the political is controlling our economy. They are controlling, uh, they're just controlling a lot of different things, and Satan is using that avenue to try to control God's children. Uh, the problem with it is a lot of people don't even know what's going on. You know, they just always say, well, this is the new norm. No, you're not, you ain't even come close to saying what the new norm is going to be like before this is over with. Um, the other one was education. Um, man, I tell you what, they use the media, I mean, like crazy, for trying to mindset or brainwash God's children um, into making things that are wrong and saying they're right and things that are right and they're wrong. Um, again, the media is, I mean, look at the, how publicized they do the riots and the destruction of everything that is going on today. And then you've got the COVID-19. Like I said, look, look how people acted and how they panicked. Look how the government sent everybody into a frenzy with that, you know, hoarding at the grocery stores, um, about tanking our economy. All right, so the other one is economics. Um, I gave an example of uh, the Asian flu, how it almost crashed the stock market of the United States when that happened. All right, so they're controlling our economy. They control our gas prices. They control our food prices. And the bad thing about it is, is people that live off the system, not trying to be ugly, but if, you, if they are dependent on our government for their living, for their clothes, for their food, then they will be in trouble when the Antichrist comes to this earth because our government is working towards a one world system, one world economy, one world money, one world religion, and God will not tolerate it. We will not be friends with communist countries. We will not be friends with God's enemies. And God's enemies are our enemies. Uh, so now you see why all the craziness is going on. They've got us focused over here on the riots and the burning and the looting and, and, and trying to say it's a race war. It's really not a race war. There's something much, much more evil going on behind that. So we take our focus off the COVID-19 over here. Well, now the, the, the riots and stuff have started to settle down. Now all of a sudden they're saying, oh, well, the COVID-19 is back over here and it's getting worse again. You see what I'm saying? It's just like I said, uh, I did a video, it's smoke and mirrors. It's smoke and mirrors, man. It, it is a deception that is falling upon this earth and it is all biblical. It is all coming to pass each and every day. Um, all right, so we did political, education, and economics. But uh, now we got religion. Now that's a big one. This is one of the avenues that Satan will control and his evil influence is controlling today. And you think, well, how is that possible? Because he's got many, many mouthpieces behind pulpits today claiming to be teaching God's Word and they're not teaching God's Word. They're, they're teaching traditions of men and false doctrine. And look at the deception in the world today. Um, I, one of the biggest one is the rapture theory, which uh, we're doing with the teens right now. One of the biggest lies that have ever come about is the rapture theory. If you believe that Jesus is going to come and fly you out of here before the great tribulation, then you will bow a knee to Satan, thinking that he is Jesus Christ. Um, of course, of course, he's going to use religion. I mean, what better way to get God's children away from God and over to Him? Uh, the battle is spiritual, and the battle is taking place amongst God's children and Satan's children today. Um, a lot of people have got their head in the sand. They don't have a clue as to what's going on. They just get up each and day, every day, and they live their lives. They go to work, they come home. Uh, they got time to go do something, fine, but they don't think nothing about what's going on around them. They're, they're blinded to the truth. They're blinded to the truth of God's Word. So what we're going to do today is we're going to cover a few examples of how Satan is using, or he will definitely be using this when he gets here, but his evil influence is already here. He's already got his children in our churches. He's already got his children behind our pulpits. Um, I know some of you have not all done the study of the Garden of Eden or whatever. Satan has children on this earth walking around in the flesh. And you might say, well, how would you know one if you met one? Test them by their fruits. Everybody understand that? Test them by their fruits. 
I mean, are they bad? Are they putting forth bad things? Are they doing evil things? Or are they good? Are they trying to help people? You see what I'm saying? You test them by their fruits. Have you ever been around somebody that's truly evil? Man, it's scary. Yes. It really is. And there's some bad ones out there, man. We we, I think God has us in this small place that we're in, uh, down there on Beach Creek or whatever, uh, because we are not privy to the most evilest things that are probably going on in the world for our own protection. Why? So that we can bring forth the Word of God. Um, so I started this with Matthew chapter 24, verse 4 and 5. Um, Jesus Christ is teaching on the mount. He's teaching His disciples of the things that are going to happen in our generation today. In His first two verses, in His words, Take heed that no man deceive you. There are a lot of people who claim to teach God's Word today and they don't know it. And they're not, and they're misleading God's children. Let no man deceive you. Alright, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Now, who is it that comes in the name of Christ? Preachers and teachers. Alright? So we're going to start off with Revelation 17, keeping the subject in mind of religion. <clears throat> This is basically about the fall of Babylon. Babylon means confusion, and Satan used as a type um, in the book of Daniel, the king of Babylon, the king of confusion. And that's Satan. Do you not see his MO working in our world today again? Smoke and mirrors. We, this is happening there. This is happening there. People are panicking and going crazy and going on. He is the master of deception, folks. Um, all right, so verse 17. And came, and came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials. Uh, they just got through pouring out the seven vials of wrath of God, okay? And talked with me, this is John, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Now many waters is talking about many people. Uh, your documentation for that in this same chapter if you go to the verse 15. So it's talking about um, so unto the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon a multitude. And I mean a great multitude of people. Alright? Uh, the word here, whore, is idolater or uh, harlotry. Alright, so let's see who, who the whore has been sleeping with. Verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Now some of you have done Revelations 13 with me. These kings are the same kings that Satan will be utilizing and controlling in the world. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Uh, so those world leaders who Satan will control. Alright? Uh, so, I mean, it says the whole earth. You understand that? And we're not talking about just a few people here, folks. Right. There's going to be a lot of people uh, drunken with that evil spirit. Alright, verse 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. Wilderness stands for world. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast. The scarlet colored beast is Satan, the red dragon of Revelations chapter 12. All right, Full of names and blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The same political system that we read in Revelations 13 again. That he will have the seven heads, which would be seven world leaders, and ten horns means they got ten powers. Alright? <clears throat> Let's see here. Alright, so who is the woman? And alright, let me ask you a question. Where will Satan set up his headquarters when he is on this earth de facto? In person. It's, it's, Jerusalem. it's Jerusalem. Okay, so this is the woman that it's talking about. So keep that in mind. That's also the same place our father was crucified. In Jerusalem. We're getting to the religious part of this. Verse 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. So what you need to understand is, this is where he will set up at. I've never been, I've not been traveled around or seen these big cathedrals and uh, you know, beautiful, fancy buildings. But that's what you need to imagine now. Satan setting up 
documented in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, claiming to beat God in the house of God. It's all decked out in purple and it's got gold and it's got stained glass. I mean, it's going to be, it's a big, beautiful church and he's going to be standing in there claiming to be Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And millions and millions of God's children will follow him because they do not know the Word of God, they've not been taught the Word of God, and they've not studied it for themselves. Because we are all responsible for ourselves uh, when, it, when it comes right down to the end of it. Um, let me see here. I'm going to look up Jeremiah 51, 6 and 7, talking about this golden cup. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. Again, the king of Babylon will be setting up shop claiming to be God. And deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her recompense. Babylon hath been a golden cup and she's going to make sure that each and every one of her lovers get a drink out of it. It's a spiritual drunkenness. It is a spiritual deception. And what is he using to do it with? Religion. What, whatever you think that Jesus Christ would look like is what he's going to look like. The most charismatic, beautiful uh, archangel that God ever created, claiming to be Jesus, that made all the earth drunken, we're not talking about a physical drunkenness. We're talking about a spiritual drunkenness because they are sipping of her cup of false doctrine and traditions of men. The nations have drunken of her wine. Nations. The whole world will wander after the beast. Therefore, the nations are mad. All right, let's go back to Revelation 17. God uses whoredom and, and idolatry and adultery because He wants His children to know what that feels like to Him. Um, I think it's the book of Hosea. He has Hosea uh, marry a whore. And it was because He wants you to know how it makes Him feel for you to step out on Him, for you to bow a knee to the Antichrist, for you not to follow the true Word of God but traditions and, and, and of men. And so, you know, that, that's a very painful thing to go through. He wants you to understand. That, that's what it makes him feel. Um, I can't help to think of the verse... Uh, oh, Lord. I can't remember it. I have to come back to that one. All right, so verse 5. All right, so did I finish 4? Yeah. Yes. All right, verse 5. And upon her forehead was the name Mystery, Babylon, which is confusion, the, the great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the whole earth. He's going to be standing in Jerusalem claiming to be Jesus Christ. Now, could you imagine the event, which I'm not going to describe everything he's going to do until I get to 13. Uh, but I say it all the time. He's going to come here performing miracles and things in the sight of us that we have never seen before in the flesh. It's going to be on your phones. It's going to be on your TVs. It's going to be on your computers. It will be worldwide spread. And millions and millions of God's children will flock to Jerusalem to worship Him, thinking He's Jesus Christ. Alright, verse 6. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of saints and with the blood of martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration that great city has been filled with blood of saints and martyrs throughout the ages. The spiritual battle has been taking place since the beginning of time for those two families, okay, the two horns, Satan and God, and one of those families has had control for a long period of time. We've watched it gradually get here and get here, and now we're just about there. <clears throat> All right, so... I did want to read. All right, we're going to go to Revelation chapter 13. While you're turning there, I'm going to quote this 2 Corinthians 11 2. Again, God wanted you to understand how Satan is going to use religion to deceive as many of God's children as he can and how it will make him feel for those who are unfaithful to him. 2 Corinthians 11 2. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. 
I got people telling me all the time that God doesn't get angry, that God's not angry. God has emotions. Amen. And now jealousy is an emotion, is it not? Yes. Mm -hmm. He has emotions. We were created in His image. You could have such a, a better relationship with Him if you, yes, I know He's the great I Am. I know He's the King of the universe. But He is still, we were created in His image. He is like us. You can talk to Him each and every day like He's your best friend. Uh, that used to be my best prayer time when I'm driving down the road and just sit there and have a conversation with God. Just like He's sitting right next to me. He wants to know what's going on with you. He wants to know what problems you got. He wants to know what you need. He wants to know what your concerns are. It says, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you uh, as a chastised virgin to Christ. So, uh, Matthew chapter 25, the parable of the ten virgins. Um, he is the groom. He has gone away <laughs> on a long trip. It's been for thousands of years. And He has left us here as we are supposed to be the bride of Jesus Christ. You see the symbology. Alright? So now, when He comes back and you're nursing a child, what does that mean? That means you were unfaithful to Him. You cheated on Him. But it's talking about the spiritual deception. I mean, not only will you be with child with the deception, but you'll also do His work thinking He's Jesus Christ. That is the mark in the hand. Doing the work of the hand of Christ thinking that He is Jesus. The marking in the head not on the forehead, in the head. Your brain, it's deception. It is the deception uh, of the Antichrist over God's children. <clears throat> but I fear lest by any means as the serpent, which is Satan, beguiled, which means seduced, Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. You know, God wrote this word for us to understand it. And it is simple once you understand how to study it. And it's simple to... And man, if you just try, that's all he has. If you try, he will give you the knowledge of the Word. And if you pray for it. Alright, I'm going to go to Revelation 13. Still talking about this last horn. Religion. Alright, Revelation 13. And we are going to start with verse 11. So, we talked about it last week. How does Satan come in? He comes in. He is going to come in pretending to be the Savior of the world. He's going to come in peaceably and prosperously. And He is going to promise you anything and everything that your little heart desires if you will follow and worship Him. That's right. <clears throat> All right. Let's see here. All right, verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. Now, the first beast in verse 1 was the political system. This is the religious. Another beast coming up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb. He looks like Jesus. Who is our lamb? It is Jesus Christ. And he spake as a dragon. Why? Because he is the dragon of Revelation chapter 12. Coming to pretending to be Jesus Christ. Alright? Verse 12. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him. Why? Because his children are already controlling the political system. It will be set into place when he gets here and he will give that system power. Alright? Why? Because the government is controlling God's children today. That's right. All right, before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. That political system is going to suffer a deadly wound uh, if you start back and reading in verse 1, which means, okay, if we've got peace, when they say we've got peace and all the players are sitting at the table, who can come up against it? Nobody. The world's at peace, right? It's supposed to be anyway. So the deadly wound is because two of those nations will have a fallout and then he will come in pretending to be Jesus and heal the deadly wound. And then the whole world's going to wander after him after that. Yep. <clears throat> Alright, verse 13. 
All right, listen to this, because I've told you all this before. What will he be doing? He's coming in peacefully and prosperously, and he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of all men. A snap of the finger. Things that we have never, ever seen with our eyes in these flesh bodies before. Now, you know as well as I do, if somebody's not educated in the Word of God, Jesus, I mean, they're going to think He's Jesus Christ. That's right. I mean, have you seen how people act over rock stars? Mm -hmm. Now, can you imagine how they're going to act after this dude comes down claiming to be Jesus and makes fire appear from the earth to the heavens? The beautiful thing is we'll know the truth. Come on. We'll sit back. We'll continue to worship. We'll continue to praise. We'll watch it unfold on TV until God calls us forth to as a testimony for Him. <clears throat> oh. Did you hear that? Thank you. I knew I was going to do that. Alright, verse 14. And He deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which He had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast. What was one of the first commandments? That you shall not make any graven images before me. But yet, this one coming to claim be Jesus Christ is telling them to make an image to the first beast, which is the political system, which had the wound of the sword and did live. Alright, 15. And I had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. It is a spiritual death, folks. Those who are deceived are possibly going to uh, spiritually be dead. I mean, you could lose your actual soul. Especially those who are not familiar with God's Word. 15. <clears throat> Was that the one I just read? 16. No, 16. And He causeth all both small and great and rich and poor and free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. It did not say on your forehead, in your forehead. It is the deception of the Antichrist. It is not going to be, uh, me and my wife went to a church when we were growing up and they show us movies about this kind of stuff and people running around with a glowing 666 in the head. Now he's not going to deceive many people if people are running around with that on their foreheads, is he? Well. <clears throat> Alright, verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark of the name of the beast for the number of, of him. This is why I said, this is what our government is wanting, to one worldism, one world money, because the more people that they can get to live off the system and depend on them, then they know that they <laughs> control them. If you do not bow a knee and you are not deceived, they will make it really hard for us to buy or sell. Does God not take care of His children? Amen. Did He not make the, the five loaves and the two fishes? I said that right, didn't the two fishes? And yes. fed a multitude of 5,000 people? It says in here that He will protect His children. And then we got enough Amen. smart and intelligent people in this room alone that know how to farm, that know how to hunt. I mean, we will be absolutely fine. Amen. But those who are dependent on the government and all that it controls, then they're going to have them. If you will bow a knee to me, I will pay your house off. If you will bow a knee to me, I'll buy mama a new car. I mean, whatever you want, if you will, and I, he'll give it all to you. He's also going to take you to hell with him when it's all said and done. That's right. <clears throat> Verse 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath the understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. So that's where you get your six, six, six. It's the sixth trump, the sixth vial, and the sixth yeah. seal. Thank you. I knew I was going to forget that. Um, so we call this the four hidden dynasties. I told you a dynasty. You know, pay attention to what I'm saying. The number six, six, six is the number of a man. A dynasty is when one family holds power for a long period of time. So this, this, uh, that word count, let me see here. 
When it says count the number of the beast, it's talking about a stone more smooth over many, many years. We're talking about Satan. How it all began and, how, and where it's coming to today. Can I get an amen? amen. amen.